A large majority of killers in general are male. When women commit homicide, the trend in criminal studies is the killing of an intimate partner. In South Korea, female murderers are few and far between. And when it does happen, it usually makes massive headlines. But none more than the story of Go Yujong. G'day there everyone, welcome to Bedtime Crime, a channel dedicated to serial killers, murder stories, and much more. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing, and let's get into today's story. Think of a friend's girlfriend. Is she kind? Is she friendly? Maybe, or maybe not. Regardless of her personality, ask yourself, do you think she could be a killer? It's a question that none of us expect to even think. However, the story of Go Yujong shook her friends, her family, as well as the whole of South Korea. Go Yujong was married to a man who went by the surname Kang. The two met through a community club and started dating when they were 26. They shared an interest in hiking. The two went on overseas hiking trips with friends. Go was described as a sweet and affectionate girlfriend, just like any other relationship. Kang and Go would later have a boy. The timeline seems pretty normal in terms of a traditional Korean life. Korea is still very much on the side of get married first, then have children. The father goes to work and the mother stays home. So, Go's life was just like most here in Korea. However, Go's other side would slowly start to leak out. Kang would tell his best friend about her bad moments. At times, she would get quite aggressive in front of their boy. However, Kang would very rarely complain. He loved his son and didn't want anything bad to say about the mother to his son. But as with many turbulent marriages, it would end in divorce in 2017. Though their marriage was rocky, it was still a shock to some of Kang's friends. It was a hard decision for Kang as he adored his son and wanted the best for him. Go, however, would take full custody of their son. It was thought that Go would take care of their son full time, but reports came out that Go would often drop him off at her parents' house for her parents to look after, something that is very normal here in Korean culture. Kang would fight back and try to gain more rights to his son. And according to Kang's younger brother, Go would mock Kang and his family one day when Kang's mother begged Go to let him see his son. She said to him, Oh, you brought your mom to help you. Go loved having this power over Kang. After the divorce, Go would meet another man surnamed Hong. Hong was also previously married and had a son around the same age as Go's son. Both Hong and Go would get married not long after. But on March the 2nd, 2019, in the city of Chongju, Hong's son dies while he is sleeping. At the time of the death, it's unsure to the public if Go was blamed for the killing. But following the timeline, she was able to continue on with her life. So, it's presumed that she was not linked to the death at this point. Whether she was responsible for her stepson's death or not, it was around this time that Go's actions would start to take a darker turn. On May 10th, 2019, Go searches weight of bones, solidity of bones, and lethal dose of nicotine. Later, the defending lawyer to Go would say that she was searching these terms because she was making a beef soup. You know, the kind of recipe that requires a lethal dose of nicotine. A week later on May 17th, Go goes to a pharmacy and purchases Zolpidem, a strong sleeping tablet. The next day, Go hops on a boat bound for the small island off the southwest coast of South Korea called Jeju Island. 
Not that this is the best place for me to promote tourism, but Jeju Island is one of the most beautiful places in South Korea. I highly recommend taking an extra couple of days of your vacation to go to visit Jeju Island. Go is making her way to Jeju Island because on the 25th of May, Kang would be able to spend time with his son. But before that day, Go needs to plan a few more things. On the 22nd of May, Go goes to a grocery store and buys a knife and bleach. For three days, Go most likely would continuously think what she is going to do when she meets her ex-husband. Kang was already a little suspicious of Go's behavior. Usually when Kang and Go message each other, the messages would be formal, straightforward, almost like talking in a business sense. However, days leading up to the murder, Go would text in a cute way, using emoticons and playful language. Something extremely out of the ordinary. On May 25th, Go, Kang, and the son all meet up. Kang was under the impression that it was just a day trip with his son. So he was surprised to find out that Go had organized a rental holiday house for the three, and was told he would stay the night. The three check in around 5pm, and it was suspected that night, Go drugged Kang and then stabbed him to death. Some point after, she cut up her ex-husband's body and put his remains in plastic bags. One must think, where was the young boy in all of this? Was he present at the time of the murder? Did he see anything? We all hope, regardless of how sick this crime was, Go had a shred of decency to keep the young boy out of it. Before the incident, Kung was in constant contact with his younger brother and family. It was suspicious to the younger brother that suddenly contacts stopped. On May 27th at around 4.30, Go checks out of the rental holiday house. Around that time, Go sends a text message to her own phone from Kung's phone to set up an alibi. And not long after, Kung's family grow more suspicious and report his disappearance. The next day, on the way to Wando Island at around 9.30pm, Go disposes some of the body parts into the sea. On May 29th, Go arrives at her residence in Kimpo and destroys more body parts. And two days later, she disposes the remaining body parts into garbage bins at 3am in the morning. Luckily, it wasn't hard for police to track down Go, and she was arrested on June 1st at the residence in Chongju. Investigators were able to find bone parts at a waste recycling plant in Incheon, and Kung's blood was found with detections of zolpidim in the holiday house. Go was convicted of the murder of Kang on February 20th, 2020, and sentenced to life in prison. She wasn't convicted of the four-year-old stepson's murder due to lack of evidence. However, Hong, the father, is convinced that Go is responsible for her son's life. This story gained a lot of attention because not only is it gruesome and rare to see women kill in such a way, but when photos came out, there were mixed emotions for the public. Some wondered how a person with such an innocent face could kill. Then this photo came out and, well, the public saw a monster. Thank you for listening and watching Bedtime Crime. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing, and we'll see you on the next story.